Welcome back to another one of our Youth Centered Podcasts. This is number six for us, and today I'm very lucky to have a, a guest that I consider a personal friend and a colleague and someone that I've actually been working with for most of my 30 years here in North Andover, and that is Frank Keneally. Frank is a resident of North Andover, grew up here in North Andover, um, and he's actually the CEO of the Merrimack Valley YMCA. Welcome, Frank, and thanks for coming on to the podcast. My pleasure. I'm excited to be here, Rick. Thanks so much. You are a pretty well-known person in the community, whether it be working with us at the Youth Center or coaching in the youth leagues. But uh, tell folks a little bit about um, where you got started, your uh, your career with the YMCA, if you don't mind. Sure. So, um, as you said, I grew up here in North Andover, attended North Andover Public Schools, uh, graduated from North Andover High School in 1985 and um, went to Salem State to be a teacher. Um, during that time at Salem State, I ended up seeing an advertisement uh, hanging on the wall for Camp Otter at the Merrimack Valley YMCA. And I took a summer position as program director there. And that was kind of my entry into the Y. After I graduated from Salem State, um, I, I considered a teaching career, but my my mentors and friends at the Merrimack Valley Y convinced me of a Y career. So uh, I started there right after graduating uh, at the Lawrence branch and um, did many different jobs there, including youth sports, where you know you and I crossed paths again uh, when when your children were playing YBL, um, swimming. Um, community programs that eventually became the executive director there at the Lawrence Y. And uh, since that time, I've, I've held several different positions um, and most recently the chief operating officer um, for the last three years. You've done a great job over there. And it's uh, for me, it's been interesting to watch over the last 30 years of you grow in that organization to the point where you are the CEO now. Um, obviously, we're going to get into a lot of topics, and mostly our input tonight, we want to talk about collaboration and networking, but um, the YMCA has got branches in the Andover, North Andover, uh, the Lawrence branch and Methuen branch. Why don't you take an opportunity to tell us what's going on at all the Y branches, and in particular, obviously, the Andover, North Andover Y, which a lot of our residents attend. Sure. So I think, uh, first of all, back up a little bit, you know, the Y is actually a worldwide organization. Uh, we, we look a little different in, in various countries. We serve 45 million people in 119 different countries. Um, here in the U.S., there's 2,700 Ys uh, here in the U.S. and in 10,000 different communities across the country. Um, locally here, as you said, we have the three facility branches. And, um, you know, Methuen, I'll start with Methuen. It's, um, it's really a uh, program center. Uh, we have a, a lot of child care, large child care center, 200 plus kids a day there, uh, preschoolers up to sixth grade, as well as a number of youth programs, music, sports, family programming, that sort of thing. Lawrence is, is the mothership. This is the original YMCA in the Merrimack Valley. Um, the building itself has been there since 1910. The, the Lawrence Y going back even further into the 1880s uh, at several different locations before ending up on Lawrence Street. That Y, similar to Methuen, has a large child care, 200 plus kids there. Um, we have a variety of programs, aquatic, a full swimming pool that was added to the building in 2006. Um, youth programming, teen development programs, youth sports, health and wellness, as well as a, an SRO, 73 men living in SRO, single room occupancy housing uh, on the top two floors of the building. So um, so very busy place over there in Lawrence, uh, serving a great, uh, great community needs there. And then in Andover, North Andover, we have a beautiful brand new facility. Um, in fact, the grand opening was actually two years ago to this day right. um, uh, over there in Andover and uh, sits right on the Andover, North Andover line. Heavy health and wellness programs, aquatics, three swimming pools, um, youth sports, um, 
Health Partners actually, Lawrence General Hospital has a uh, location there for physical therapy and actually a doctor has her office there. Uh, WIC, the North Andover WIC program has their office there as well. Women and children uh, do a lot of uh, support for single women uh, with with food and, and all kinds of other social needs. And um, very, very busy place. Um, 7,000 member units and uh, you know that that relates to around you know 15,000 people that we serve in that branch alone um, you know through all the different things that we we offer there so um, it's exciting that uh, we doubled the size of that facility two years ago and uh, quite a few people from North Andover take part in that uh, facility in addition we have three summer camps uh, Camp Otter is a day camp in Salem, New Hampshire. We have buses that run all through the Merrimack Valley. And then we have uh, Camp Nokomis and Camp Lawrence, which are on Bear Island and Lake Winnipesaukee. And uh, quite a few folks from North Andover attend those three camps as well. So uh, they operate in the summertime, but a uh, big operation um, that, as you know, that we'll, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit later about some of the programs that we offer up there. So. Yeah, the Y does such a great job, and I don't think people know about everything that's being offered. And I actually had a tour of the Y last year in Andover, North Andover, very impressed with all of the new renovations. When I started here in 1988, uh, you and I have had this conversation a few times that I was intrigued with how human service agencies, youth organizations, uh, and places, particularly like the Y and the, and the Boys and Girls Club, I was concerned that we were all kind of islands amongst ourselves, that uh, there was almost a failing of um, concern in terms of networking. Everybody was kind of fighting for the same dollars, um, you know, whether it be federal funding or state funding. Um, and I just felt like we were all doing our own thing. And um, we've done such a great job over the last 30 years, and I've worked directly with you with the Y and, and other people. Um, Tell me a little bit about, you know, that history that we're talking about and how that's really improved in terms of networking among all the agencies. Sure. I think it, I think we are in a totally different world than we were before. And um, I, I agree back then, you know, 30 years ago, it was there was a lot of territory protect your turf kind of thing. And it could be around funding. It could be around, you know, certain programs. And uh, I think we lost sight of the bigger issue of there are large community needs out there. And if we pool our resources together, we can have a greater impact in, in working on those community needs. Um, and, and the resources are not just dollars, they're facilities, they're human resources, people, talent, and, uh, and ideas. And I think that that has certainly changed in a great way. Uh, you know, I, I think of, the youth organizations that work together like the Y and the the Youth Center here in North Andover and the Boys and Girls Club and Andover Youth Services, but even other uh, institutions, we never really had a strong partnership with Merrimack College. Now that partnership is is very strong and, you know, strong here with the Youth Center too, you know, just with some of the recent activity uh, with the, the needs assessment that happened. So, uh, you know, Lawrence General Hospital, I mean, 30 years ago, would you imagine that the Lawrence General Hospital would be in one of our Y buildings? Right. And so I think that, um, you know, that has changed a lot. And I think it, it's really changed for the good. I think uh, you can see the impact of those organizations working together. Um, and I, I think partly, you know, I think the funders got it right before we did. You know, they kind of, they almost forced a lot of foundations and state funding almost said, we're not going to fund you unless you collaborate. Yeah, I mean, that was really clear with a place like the Stevens Foundation, who has been a funder for all of us. And when I was applying for grants in the in the 90s, Betty Beelan, God rest her soul, uh, was running the Stevens Foundation. She would always ask me, well, are you collaborating with other areas? Are you collaborating with other programs? Um, we started to take a look at more regionalization, the Merrimack Valley area in general, and how we could all work together. And I, I agree with you. I think the the funders and the, the the donors and the foundations they saw it before we did. I, I do believe I do have great memories of you know trying to battle a little bit with people on that. And fortunately, 
you know, having personal relationships with someone like you or Billy Robinson over at the Boys and Girls Club or Billy Faye over at the NW Services made that stuff um, easier than anything. We talked about the benefits. Any Are there any negatives to actually networking and collaboration in your mind, or is it all positive? No, I, I think you have to be ready for collaboration. I think um, if you rush into things without really thinking things through, then you, then those collaborations and partnerships can fail. So I think there needs to be a lot of thought that goes into who you're collaborating, why are you collaborating, you know, what what is the outcome that you're looking for. I think you can't just say, well, let's just jump in together. You can't dive into things. Um, there's different levels of collaboration. You know, I think if you start out with a partnership, um, you know, maybe some joint shared space or programming before you really dive deep into into things. I think uh, rushing into partnerships and collaboration can be dangerous. So there's definitely some negatives. Um, I think relationships are, as you said, are, are really important. And that's why it, it starts with the networking. Getting to know people in the community, in the field that you're looking to uh, make an impact in and start to get to know them and um, once once that happens I think that that's kind of where the collaboration begins and it's uh, I think that's an important part of of making those collaborations work yeah you talk about having almost a soft start and for us it was a simple program called MV Duel where we actually connected with the Boys and Girls Club in Lawrence and over youth services the North End of youth services and we we kind of rotated to different sites and ran some athletic activities, whether it be flag football or street hockey, and kind of made it into a competition. And And from there, we've grown to have collaborations with the Y, the, the Boys and Girls Club, obviously, and over youth services, other youth services or, or agencies in our area. Um, and we've gone to a point now that just this year, our, our kids at the youth center have been over tutoring at the Boys and Girls Club. We've been over collaborating with Andover Youth Services. Um, due to your offer, our kids are gonna be actually doing a little bit with the Music Clubhouse over at the uh, at the Y, at both Lawrence and Methuen, which we're excited about. And there seems to be an, an open that everyone wants to kind of work together um, for a lot of different things, issues that affect our own community, but for the region. You and I have been involved with a, uh, a great program called Core 4, and you know, you're the architect of, of this program in terms of getting it off the ground and what it was all about. I don't think people know enough about this program. We've talked to some funding sources um, because obviously this is a program that costs a little bit of money to run. Um, and I, I really would like us to even PR this program more because it, it's incredible. But for our listeners, uh, what was your idea of this Core 4 program? And, and we are in year four of it. How did it grow? I, I think the original idea was really about bringing kids from different communities together. And I knew that we had um, a leadership base with, with yourself and, and Billy Robertson and Bill Fahey and myself that would buy into that and take the leadership on that and um, it kind of started from there and once we agreed upon what we were trying to do um, we were able to really get the kids to buy in and and once that happened once the kids started to get involved in the program it's really where it took off but it really truly did start with how do we bring communities together and um, so Core four being the four agencies, um, the Y, the North Andover Youth Center, the Andover Youth Center, and the Lawrence Boys and Girls Club. And the four basic, you know, basically the the core, if you will, of the communities of the Merrimack Valley, Methuen, Lawrence, Andover, and North Andover. And getting kids from those four communities to come together for a leadership experience. And what better place to bring them together than than Camp Nokomis Absolutely. on Lake Winnipesaukee, where we can get out of the valley, get to this place where um, a lot of kids have not had the opportunity to, to be at and experience new things and, and really explore the concept of leadership and explore the similarities and differences in our communities and in our individuals and um, then bring it back to the Merrimack Valley, you know, with developing the next generation of leaders. And I think the first year was such a success that the, the kids were the ones that came back and they started talking about it. 
uh, to a point now where kids look forward to it. The original group of kids that we were we were only planning on doing a two-year experience with, many of them, especially here at the youth center, are peer leaders that are helping the next group of kids come through the program. So um, I think that that's really been exciting to see. I think another thing that really speaks to when, when you deepen collaborations, um, the impact that you can have. This started out as, as Frank, Rick, Billy, and, and Bill. And now I think if the four of us walked away tomorrow, I truly believe that our staff teams would keep this going. Sure, It's been really, you know, the roots have really taken with our staff team. They love it. They own it. They do most of the planning. And um, it's good for for them to collaborate and work together with the other agencies as well. So that, that's been really exciting about the coming together on, on many levels. So we're going to be going to our fourth conference the first week in June up at the island. And I agree with you. Um, what started out with the four of us uh, has grown to each one of our departments having people that have taken leadership roles. For myself, it's been Molly Malandrino, who uh, has been with me all four years. It is now the advisor for this program. Our core four program meets throughout the year. Uh, we've brought it back to the youth center to do some things in North Andover, community service projects. And we're also connecting twice a year. We get everybody to come back. We were over at the the boys club a couple of months ago to kind of reconnect with all the kids from the island and then uh, we're hosting here at the youth center in may um a kind of like a pre uh, event leading up to this year's conference that will uh we'll have some food and some activities and all the kids can kind of reconnect here so it's been pretty amazing um and my hope is that uh you know at some point in time you and i can uh maybe just go over and watch it and not have to stay in the cabins with the kids and everything which is always an experience but uh we have young talent that's going to come and carry this over i see core four you know going on forever in a lot of ways um obviously it it's not cheap but we have uh expenses for the conference and you know hopefully there will be some people out there that will continue to support us um, as you and i have talked about funding will never be the reason why we don't continue this we'll find a way to make it work um, but it's just been an amazing program for young professionals getting in the field, and, and you, uh, I think you're in the 50s now, are you, Frank? Just 50? Just turned 50. Just turned 50. So being here as long as us now uh, in our age, what, what advice do you give to the young Frank Keneally's in their 20s that are starting out in this field around the areas of collaboration and networking? Yeah, I think, um, Again, don't don't make some of the mistakes I made. And I think, um, you know, I mentioned before rushing into things. Um, I remember very vividly um, when I was in my 20s rushing into a partnership with Lawrence Public Schools that that didn't work out. And um, I think it could have if it was if I had more experience and if I had had thought this through a little bit more. So I think, you know, start small, um, find a way to maybe do some joint programming. Um, some program sharing, some uh, shared spaces, um, follow, you know, follow your supervisors, find mentors um, to talk about, you know, how to make collaborations work, um, training and education, um, and then, you know, try some things. You know, I, I think that that we, we have a model in the why we say 70% of your learning is through experience. I think sometimes people get wrapped up in, well, if you send me to a training, I'll come back and I'll be able to just get it done. And training is important, but I think learning from your experience is the, is the best way to learn. And that um, trying some things out uh, on a smaller scale, and then when you start to have success, you know, move into other areas. And don't try to do things yourself. When you collaborate, you truly uh, look for other opinions, you lean on others. Um, so don't try to make everything work yourself. I think that would be some advice that I would give for sure. Yeah, and for my young staff, I'm really encouraging them to have the confidence to pick up the phone and maybe call over to the Y and, and do a little networking. Sometimes I, I need to make sure my young staff knows that people are open to sharing. We, we're all robbers in a lot of ways. We, we share each other's ideas. One thing that was really special for us this fall is um, I took my staff to a full day staff training and we actually did it in the Merrimack Valley and we started off our morning coming over to your facility and 
Claudia um, basically talked us through the whole music program and over there and you know kind of how things work and then from there we uh, we headed over to one of my former kids here Marquis Victor's elevated thought program and kind of looked at all the great things they're doing art wise and music wise and then we took a trip over to, to meet Karen over at the Boys and Girls Club to hear more about their tutoring program and what they're doing afternoon academically. And then we headed up the street and we went over to Andover Youth Services and their staff actually put us through some experiential activities. And then we kind of got a tour of a great new youth center over there in Andover. And then we kind of talked about everything from drugs and alcohol and our opiate issues that we're having in the region. Um, and it was just a great day for us to network, collaborate, uh, get ideas of how do we can bring it back here and share some of our successes to the different groups. So um, networking is alive, it's strong, and I encourage people to continue to do that. Frank, you wear a number of different hats. I want to talk to you a little bit right now about your, you will be winding down your career as the chairman of the Joseph N. Herman Youth Center Incorporated this summer. Um, can you tell people the J the JNHYC has been responsible for obviously uh, raising the money to build this youth center, um, and then you know after we built the building and turned it over to the town, uh, we have stayed in existence to help raise funds uh, to maybe offset things that the town can't pay for or maybe some other things. So uh, you've been the chairman for a last number of years. Can you talk a little bit about what the what the mission of the nonprofit is and and maybe some of the accomplishments under your leadership here? Sure, I think um, the most important thing that the foundation does is, is that we raise money and we give it back to the youth center. And we give it back in, in a number of different ways. I think the first thing that we do is we give the money back to make sure that the youth center is accessible to all of the residents of North Andover. Um, if money is an issue, um, then the Herman board can provide scholarships so kids can take part in, in membership and programs and other services here at the youth center. We also have uh, given money to establish new programs, uh, which, is, which is something, there are two things that I really get excited about when I talk about uh, what we give back to the youth center. And that, that's the new program development as well as the training opportunities that you've, that you've recently asked us to support. I think uh, our ability to support the staff in getting funding for their ideas so they can try new things and then getting the training that they need to better serve the youth of our town is really important and really rewarding for, for our committee. Um, we also do a few other things. We, we certainly buy um, items for the facility, uh, items that may not be covered in the town budget uh, to take care of the facility in the best way we can. Uh, provide equipment and, and other things that the youth center might need. Um, we also provide some college scholarships. Uh, we just recently gave out um, six college scholarships uh, uh, at, our, at our fundraising event, um, $2,500 each, so significant scholarships to youth that, are, um, that have been engaged in the youth center and contributed to the youth center. Uh, those are exciting opportunities for us. And then also being here uh, in terms of emergencies. If, if there's a family that needs help, that um, something comes up. I think we had a recent example of a fire around Christmas time and you asked for some funding to help the family and we we're able to do that. So those are all, all the things that we do. And, um, but essentially, you know, we, we don't really make decisions about programs and services here. You know, we, we really are here to raise money and support the work of the youth center. Uh, not necessarily be the ones that drive what happens here. So um. it's been a great uh, thing for myself and my staff. Um, the the people on the committee are just invested people who care about the kids and care about the youth center. And you know, every year we have a couple of great functions. Obviously, our auction is the big one, which is a great night to give out scholarships, honor our youth of the year. We also have an annual fund that's run during the fall time, and we have a carnival that helps proceeds go towards our summer program. So. Um, the nonprofit has been an amazing thing in, in terms of building the building, but then carrying on and a great support to our program here. I think right. that um, in terms of the, the time that I've spent on the board, I think um, transitioning our auction, you know, is something that I think about um, one of the contributions that I feel really good about making, uh, transitioning from 
the taste of North Andover that was held here at the youth center that in its last year didn't raise as much money as we had hoped to our new event where with our auction I think um, being able to get the board to wrap their their head around that and uh, helping get the leadership in place you know Holly Williams does an amazing job with that event and and getting them to buy into I think if we change the event if we do something different uh, we can generate more excitement and generate more money to support the youth center so as I think about um, you know some of the successes that we've had during my time on the board I, I would put that at the top as well absolutely and um, you've had three boys that have taken advantage of the youth center over the years as a parent um, what the, what's the experience been with your kids coming here yeah, it's been it's been a great experience. I, I think, as you know, all three of my boys are, are different, and um, it's been it's been great to watch them grow, uh, take part in in the different programs. Uh, Sean um, with basketball, you know, basketball has been his passion, so it kind of started there. Uh, you know, back in fourth grade, coming here on Saturday mornings as part of the Booster Club, that was probably his first introduction to the youth center. And then, um, and then doing a number of different things, Joseph Walsh Summer League, and um, you know coming to the youth center as a member after school, and then leading right up to you know as an employee now of the youth center. Uh, it's been great in his development. I mean, having you as a mentor, the other staff that uh, care about him has been just fantastic, and you know we're so appreciative in helping in his development. Uh, and then, you know, like a, a, my middle guy, Jason, you know, core four is he's sure. really deeply engaged in core four. It's something that he loves. Um, you know, he liked coming to the youth center as well when he was in middle school. But I think, uh, you know, being engaged in core four is really his passion and his connection to the youth center. And, uh, you know, I think probably Aaron is a combination of both. You know, he he did the basketball things. Joseph Herman came here after school. And now his involvement in core four as well so um you know it's just it's the youth center is one of those things where um you know it's a it's a gem for the town it's uh it's something that uh you know we're very proud of that we have here and uh proud of the team that runs it and the impact that that you have on on the kids every day and and certainly my three boys have benefited benefited tremendously over their time here well, we've loved having them, that's for sure. Frank, we have a few minutes left, and uh, we would not be able to end a conversation <laughs> if we didn't talk about uh, one of our idols, uh, both of us, along with Billy Robinson and, and Bill Fay. The core four was uh, our first involvement was going up to the, the camp, and uh, you, you offered to drive. And, of course, we all had to listen to Bruce Springsteen, and <laughs> it was good that all four of us actually wanted to listen to Bruce Springsteen. So both of us, we've had many conversations. Frank and I have had an opportunity to go to some concerts together. Um, this last River Tour, we actually took in two shows. Um, what what is Bruce Springsteen uh, mean to you in terms of your personal life, your professional life? Um, I know for me, um, he has been the soundtrack of my life um, through the good, the bad. Um, and what about you? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, first of all, I, you know, I did come to the party kind of late, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I'd love to be able to say that I was there, you know, for at Paul's mall, you mm -hmm. know, when he did the tour for greetings, but uh, I was not, uh, you know, born in the USA was really my, um, you know, my entry into the Springsteen realm and then kind of went backwards in the catalog from there. Um, but you know, it it really has been the the connection with the songs, really that um, you know, being able to relate on an emotional level and see see myself and see my people around me, my family, uh, in those experiences that he sings about, and that connection. That's kind of where where it started. Uh, it's been an inspiration, um, you know. But again, it always for me comes down to the songs, you know. Um, you know, he is in a he is a person, you know, I think, um, you know, we, we admire, you know, for, for what he does and how he handles himself and that sort of thing. But, you know, the, those connections with the songs and, and, you know, for inspiration, for, for whatever you needed, they were always there. You know, it's, it's hard to explain sometimes. There's probably people on the other end listening to this saying, 
what is wrong with Frank? I don't get it. And and I'm, as you, Rick, you've probably dealt with that your whole life. But the people that get it know exactly what, what you're talking about, you know? Well, my staff's getting used to it because they've all, all the staff I've had for the last 30 years has had to listen to Springsteen here at the Youth Center and my uh, my analogies with Springsteen's. Going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Both of us are big uh, E Street radio fans. Um, five words to describe uh, Bruce Springsteen from you. Five words. Wow. They only asked for three. That's why we're asking for five today. <laughs> for five. Um, you know, geez, I guess I'd have to start with passion. I mean, I think you... You hear passion in 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 his songs. It comes through for sure. Real, you know, he's he's a real person. Uh, writes about real life. Um, hard hard working. I mean, anybody who's been to his shows knows that he puts everything into what he does. Um, you know, the last show that we saw uh, the on the River Tour that you mentioned. Um, he played for over four hours and, and Bruce has got to be 67, 68 67. years old now. And, uh, you know, to play for four hours was just amazing. Uh, thoughtful, you know, I, I think, uh, there's, there's nothing that he does that he doesn't put a lot of thought into. And, um, geez, five is, five is hard. Um, well, I'll jump in with my five All right, right there you now. Go. Now, we didn't share ours, but it's interesting that we do have a couple of uh, similarities. So my five is number one, passion, for yeah. the same reasons you said. Hope is number two for me. I think he's given me hope. I think he gives all people hope in his words. Um, and nothing better than um, after 9-11. I think he gave this, this uh, country a lot of hope. Uh, with the rising album number three real he definitely keeps it real and as you know for me that's that's important for me transcendent i think he's uh he's not an oldies act which people think that it's become um he's still putting out really great music and um you know you're right he's 67 you wonder how much longer he can continue to do it but he is transcendent at our last concert we were amazed with how many older people there there was in us and all the young kids that were there it was great um, and definitely, I think he's driven, um, totally driven. And in my profession and the way I operate, you know, that's something I respect the most to just to drive to, to work on that passion. How about your five favorite Springsteen songs? You got you definitely we know that Sirius XM did a recent uh, poll of the top 100. Uh, so we're just going to ask you, what's your five favorite songs? Yeah. Um, so. You want me to count them down or go from number one to five? Why don't you go from five to one? <laughs> five to one. Okay. So uh, I would say The River is uh, is number five. Um, you know, I'm a big, big fan of that song. Uh, number number four would probably be uh, The Promised Land. Uh, number three would be um, Born in the USA. Uh, number two would be Badlands. And, and number one would be um, Born to Run. I mean, I, I think it starts there. Uh, you know, that, you know, that's probably, you know, his most famous song. And But, you know, it, it just starts there for me. Uh, you know, the top five is, is tough because there's so many other songs and uh, other, you know, from different albums. But for me, that, that would be the top five. You know, if, if, if you clicked on the Springsteen play playlist on my iPod, I, I think those five would come up. Definitely be on there. Um, I can see uh, your wife and my wife rolling their eyes listening to this right now as we're continuing to talk about Bruce Springsteen. But my five going from five to one, uh, Land of Hope and Dreams at number five. It's just a powerful song for me uh, in the work that I do here and in, in trying to empower and for people to to know that they can they can uh, they can be resilient and, and overcome things. Number four, the classic Born to Run. Number three, the equally classic Thunder Road. Number two, I have Badlands too. It, um, it still to this day is a line that in my entire staff here at the Youth Center is probably sick of hearing, but uh, it ain't no sin to be glad you're alive is probably my favorite line ever in a song. And number one would be someone's not number one. It's a song that um, I actually got you to listen to it when we were at the River to a drive all night. It's a little bit of a romantic ballad but for me it has a lot more than to actually romance it has to do with with driving and and basically you know overcoming some of the adversity that you guys have so 
Um, those are my top five. So as you know, we could spend the next five hours talking about Bruce Springsteen. We won't bore. Dave, Dave Marsh has nothing on us. He definitely doesn't. <laughs> but uh, my uh, trusty assistant here, Susan Martin, is starting to fall asleep. So I think that's probably uh, time to end the Bruce Springsteen um, talk. Frank, thanks for coming on the podcast today and talking about networking and collaboration and you know, my hope is that young professionals as well as professionals our age continue to collaborate and network, um, I think, for the best for everybody and for our entire region here. I love the Merrimack Valley, and for me, the Merrimack Valley is North Andover, Andover, Methuen, and Lawrence. And uh, the more that we can collaborate for not just the kids, for everything um, is, is great. So thank you for coming in to talk to that. Uh, as always, thank you to Susan Martin from NACAM coming in. Uh, this is her last day, as I said, holding my hand. So starting next week, we will be uh, totally on my own. And uh, I know I'll have, Laura, I'll have Susan on um, speed dial on that. But as we say after every podcast, too much passion is not enough passion.